I'm going to be using my practice finger once again to sculpt a peacock nail. And the nail itself isn't sculpted as extreme as some of the things I've done with my practice finger, but it does have a beautiful sort of uh, stiletto base in it. And then it has little peacock feathers that are sculpted out along the sides, and then the whole peacock is 3D. It is so, uh, I don't know, it's just vibrant and uh, kind of intense colors. I just really love it. Most of these colors are from Double Dip, and I can put all of their colors in the description box below, as well as my discount code. So if you would be so kind, if you are looking for some new acrylics and you want to try them out, use my code. I would really appreciate it, as I do earn a small commission. But, you know, if you want to give them a try, it is an option. Otherwise, they do have sales all the time, and you can layer the code with the sales, I think. Otherwise, I hope you guys love this design. I love my little practice finger. It comes in handy so much, and I will see you guys next time. Bye! So we're going to begin by fitting a form to the nail. So I'm going to prep my form, pinch the end so that it is closed. I always do that. I love a closed form uh, for applying it to a nail, whether it's on an actual human or a silicone finger, either way. And then fit the form nice and snug underneath that nail. Pinch it down to where you want the length of the stiletto to be. Actually, I'm going to quickly open up the sides of my form a little bit. Um, but then you're going to want to take and just make sure it's pinched down to the length that you want the nail to be. So if you wanted to say be a length of seven, you'd close the form to the seven, if hopefully that makes sense. But then we're going to be blending the nail down to the form with a little bit of clear acrylic. This is just to kind of prevent a, a lip there or an edge. And it just makes that spot, which could sometimes be a weak spot, a little bit extra strong. And then once you have that blended, then you're going to take a shimmery green acrylic. And this one has a slight gold hue to it, which I think is just perfect for a peacock. And we're going to be sculpting the base of our little stiletto but instead of having it come to a sharp point instead you're going to kind of flatten out the tip of that and give it like the base or the the tip of the longest feather once you have that first part done you're going to apply that color over the whole nail so you're going to do a full a full layer over the nail down the enhancement and this is really where you're going to make the strength and the structure of the nail while this isn't one that i would say is practical and wearable just for the sake of practice and consistency i do always like to give it at least something of an apex there are certainly times where artistic necessities kind of overtake the structural stability but you know you don't want to do that too often or you'll go soft on your techniques but then once we have that done, I'm going to start kind of working in the, the side feathers. So you're going to sculpt one, have it rest down on the nail form backing until it starts to slightly cure, which I'm using a fairly quick setting monomer. So it, it starts to cure pretty quick. Then you're going to slide your brush underneath it and flick it up. So it's going to do, you're just going to kind of lift it and give it some height. So when you're doing that, you're going to do this on the other side too. So it kind of, you can see it's turning matte, slide your brush underneath it, kind of lift it up. And then after you do those ones, and you can do however many of these going up the side of your nails you'd like. Um, I think I ended up doing, I don't know, maybe it was just the two on each side. We'll, we'll see in a second. I can never remember some of these things. But you're going to then just keep going from side to side, lifting those up. But after you have them all sculpted, you can blend them out and smooth them out because it isn't like a smooth transition from the nail to those little side bits. There's kind of a crease there. You're going to want to just smooth that out so there's not such a sharp, sharp crease. So there's the next one. And then after, like I said, after you have those done, you can add some more acrylic over the top of the whole nail. Mine, like I said, when I was trying to build in an apex, wasn't, wasn't quite all the way there. So you're going to want to smooth that out as well. There was a little bit of a shallow spot on the tip of my nail. Once all of that's done, you're going to take your e-file and you're going to file this nail into shape. Because it is not your standard shaped nail, it is going to be a little bit different for filing. So I did go through and I do, I did a little bit of the, I don't know, more delicate filing with a, an under the nail cleaner bit. So I'm just going to go through and kind of smooth some things out on the sides of my nail, underneath it, kind of go around some of those, those different spots with that under the nail cleaner bit. It's just going to give you a little bit more of a kind of get in the tight spaces a little bit better. So then after you have that done, you're going to use that same green and you're going to be adding more texture and more of those little feathers. So each of these like circular sections are going to be the tips of the feather. So where the eye of each feather is going to be. So the more you do, the more eyes of feathers there will be, which adds a lot of detail and a lot of beauty, but it also can sometimes end up looking a little too congested, a little too dense. So you might want to space them. So I spaced them so that they're each one kind of had their own spot, which you can do, or you can layer them right on top of each other, like mermaid scale so that they, you know, they, the one you do, 
gets halfway over the top of a different one and that is a different style and that is perfectly fine whichever way that you personally think you like better is is what works so just keep adding these until you get to about the spot where your the natural nail ends and the enhancement starts this is just like a vague a vague reference but it'll be you know where you want the wings of your peacock to be and so after you have that uh, stop adding those little green scallops and then take a darker shade of green and add a little bit of shading just around each one. Just do it subtly. Uh, it doesn't have to be like a drastic thing. You don't want to be overly dramatic, but you just want to bring out those feathers. Then you're going to be doing the wings and I'm going to be using a beige color for this. So you're just going to just take and gently press, press the wing out. And so a peacock's wings are actually pretty, uh, I don't know, plain and boring compared to the rest of his colorful body. They're sort of this, you know, kind of beigey tan with a slight gold hue, but it's not nearly as exciting. So my peacock is not proportionate. His tail feathers are far too large if you're actually going for realism here. This is more like a whimsical, realistic whimsy, I suppose. So you could make the wings really small. They're, like I said, they're not really the exciting part. They're just a separation between his head and his, and his tail. So then I'm just going to add a touch of metallic gold to it not overdoing it but just you know a smidge then with an aqua color i added just this first transition from uh, tail feathers to the rest of his body but then going back to my metallic gold i'm going to be pressing and adding a circle into the top of each of the eyes of the feather so just when you're doing this use a small amount of acrylic that's relatively wet hopefully the metallic gold you're using is plenty pigmented that you don't have to worry about diluting the pigment by using the acrylic wet and just press in that circle. You don't want it to be uneven or lumpy or too dome shaped because you're going to be adding more layers of acrylic to the top of this and you don't want it to end up being too thick and clunky looking. So if you're worried about that, instead of using acrylic to paint the eyes on the feathers, I would use an acrylic paint or a gel paint, not, um, not use acrylic if you're just worried about it getting too thick. If you don't feel like you can sculpt them thin enough, that would be the alternative that I would, would recommend. So we've got all of those. Make sure you don't skip any of those side ones. Uh, you, might, you might accidentally skip. I just look at it, make sure that they all got, all got that gold. And then after you have that done, we can start doing his body. So pick a really nice, rich shade of blue. A little shimmer never hurt anybody. This whole design is all about shimmer and really rich, deep jewel tone colors. So we're going to be doing his body and this is a color that has just a very subtle shimmer to it but i think it really adds to the whole bird peacock type of a type of an image and blend it down into those feathers into the tail feathers just slightly you want to be a smooth transition you don't want to look like he's patchwork together it just should kind of flow from one section to the next and then you're going to be doing his head and like i said the proportions here aren't realistic his tail feathers are considerably large for this for his head and his wings but if you do want to think of it and you're like but uh, you know it, it i want to be more realistic one thing to keep in mind is that if his tail feathers are towards you his head and his body will look significantly smaller just because of you know if his tail feathers are coming out towards you it's such a long train of feathers that they will just up here larger so if that means anything to you there's that i added just a smidge of green onto the wings and then i'm going to be adding the crown of feathers with that dark blue leaving the space between the crown and the head i'll add the little lines with paint instead of trying to do it with acrylic i'm going to add his beak with those same blue I will go back through and uh, do some facial details on him later just to kind of, because the beak isn't actually blue, they're kind of a gray color, but we'll fix that. But for now, just for sake of convenience, I did sculpt it with blue. With that same shade of blue, I'm going to be adding the next layer in the eyes of the feathers. So this is a smaller circle inside the gold one towards his body. So if you're going to sort of offset it in this, so it's not perfectly in the center, you're going to want to pull that circle ever so slightly towards his body if that makes sense. So there should be a thicker gold line towards the tip of the nail versus the top of, of these little eyes. So then you're going to fill in all of those. Make sure again that your blue acrylic is nice and pigmented. If it's not, if the one that you're using isn't nearly as rich as this one, and you know, depending on the brand, some of them just aren't and they look beautiful and it's not really a huge deal, but they just may not work for this application. You could sculpt the gold circle and then do the blue and the rest of it with paint. You can do whatever part of this with paint that you want to. Same thing with shading around the feathers. If you're, you know, you don't have the right shade of dark green acrylic, use some paint. It's easier to mix paint than it is to mix acrylic. So if that 
is something to consider, then there you go. Now we're going to be highlighting his body with the same turquoise that I used to start the blend between body and tail feathers. That pretty much got covered up, but we're going to go back to that and add just a kind of a highlight and a richness and a sheen to his body and his head. And then just a little bit to that crown of feathers not trying to completely cover up our dark blue, but now we are going to do the rest of all of the details on him with acrylic paint. With some white, peacocks have a lot of white feathers, or it's actually like white skin on their face and then down their beak, and then a little bit of a white and black mix on the wings, kind of going down in layers, almost like uh, turkey feathers, kind of, if you wanna see exactly how this looks, if you don't wanna just replicate what I did by dipping my brush in white and black paint at the same time. Uh, there's plenty of images of peacocks on the interwebs that you could that you could see. And then with black, I'm going to be adding the very center of the eyes of my feathers, which is a little upside down, well, the feathers themselves are upside down right now, but it's a U shape that would be upside down if the feathers were right side up. But since the feathers are upside down, the U's are right side up. With black paint, I'm going to finish detailing the beak, add his eyes, do a couple outlines here and there, not over outlining this. I want this nail to be kind of, um, I don't know, sort of a glam, a glam peacock. So I'm not going to over outline it. I want it to stay shimmery and beautiful and not quite as pop art as outlines can get. But then with the black, I'm going to be adding the line down the center of each feather for where the quill would be. A little bit of a very bright green highlight on the feathers right around the eyes, a little like dashed line almost. It doesn't have to be perfect. You don't have to overthink it. Just really, really quick little lines is all you have to do. And use a green that is vivid compared to your background color because if you're going to go through the process and actually add these little lines you want them to be visible so just make sure that it's a nice a nice bright shade of green so that these feathers stand out peacocks are just so bright and so beautiful that you don't want to dim his color whatsoever once that's done i'm going to apply a layer of gel sealer over the background so that's going to be the green that is above the wings if that makes sense. And then some matte top coat over our Mr. Peacock. And this nail is done. I love it so much. And I also love getting to sculpt on my practice finger. I don't get to sculpt really all of that often because most of my clients and myself are just a fill. Every once in a while I'll do a new set on myself, but it really doesn't happen that often. And when I'm doing my practice nails for the videos for you guys, I typically just work on top of a preformed tip. So getting to sculpt is a huge treat for me. I hope you guys enjoy watching the process as much as I enjoy completing the process. And if you do decide to do a recreation, I would love to see it. Also, don't forget to subscribe and hit that wonderful little notification bell so you don't miss any of my future videos. And I will see you next time. Bye!